Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen and this is Create. Today I'm going to be taking you through all the latest updates from the previous Create series that I ended up doing. If you want to check those out, you can see in the video description. Otherwise, let's get into all this fabulous, fantastic, brand new content that Create has brought together. First, let's start off with the windmill bearing. This no longer functions with a single sail frame. You're going to need multiples, at least eight in fact. It also has new little tool tip previews that you can see. On top of that, you now can see if something is malfunctioning with a little bit of a preview that it tells you here. This contraption was unable to assemble, for example. Now in this case, I'm trying to move obsidian. You no longer can do so. It is not something that happens with the cart contraptions. We've got the zapper, or at least the creative world shaper now. The old zapper has been removed and it's been combined into the creative world shaper. Several new options are in here as well as settings, and it's pretty much just creative only, sadly. And the old deforester has been removed. Rest in peace. It is no longer going to be with us. It uh, pretty much got the axe. Now there's a new setting that Create gives you, and that's this one here on your escape menu. If you check it out, you can actually change some of your configurations on your client, the world generation, and so on. Plus, you've got a new option called Pondering. This is an index of all the different complex machinery and options that there are for Create, or at least most of them. It's a work in progress. And as you can see here, it pretty much explains everything bit by bit on how every single thing in the mod practically works. Um, you just hold down the W button and it starts a little preview video. You can fast forward and skip to the next one. You can also check out what's in the area by checking this identify section and see what the different parts are called in case you're confused. You can see related parts to it. You can also skip scenes, go backwards and forwards as you'd like to. On top of that, you can even slow it down in case it's going a little bit too fast for you to otherwise understand. And you can replay it. It's very versatile and intended completely to replace me. So feel free to stop watching the video and no, no, just keep watching, please. But you can easily understand a lot of Create with this new feature. Let's talk about shoots. The old shoot right here and the new one, the smart shoot. The difference is similar to funnels. As you can see here, I have nothing in the top. Let's take a couple of poisonous potatoes, a couple of regular ones, put it in the top, and you'll see that it just drops them down, and this funnel automatically now will pick things up, which you can configure it to also deposit things out just by using your wrench. Now let's take that a step further with this, the smart shoot. If I take the same items, a couple poisonous, a couple regular potatoes, you can see that there's a potato in the filter slot, and nothing happens. Nothing will go through. Why is this? Regardless of the order in here, it's because it has a redstone signal going to it. As you can see, it's currently stopping it. Let's get rid of this. And the item dropped and instantly got picked up by the funnel. As before, you can reverse it. But it only picked up regular potatoes because that's what the filter was set for. Now let's talk about gantry shafts and gantry carriages, as well as a few other bits and baubles. Gantry carriages are items that can be attached to gantry shafts. This is a gantry carriage mounted on the red gantry shaft. As you can see here, I currently have a gear shift, which has some rotational power coming up through it and making the gantry shaft rotate. It can also be activated by redstone. If I use this little extendo grip right now on this remote control item, which we'll cover in a moment, it will allow me a certain measure of turning things on like the remote control in the bottom left there, has just raised up this plank and now stuck things to a sticker. I can turn on and off redstone signals on each of these gantry shafts to change the functionality of how things go, giving rotational force at the end of a movable item without it being on some kind of cart. And by doing this, it allows me to modify things. Now that sticker at the top there, which is picking up and placing down that little slab, is something that when modified with redstone will change its sticky state, whether it's picking something up or not. As you can see, it's changing that state with each redstone change. So it's toggleable. And by just gently placing this back down, I can undo it. So let's talk about this item that's on the lectern, a linked controller. 
you can set it for whatever remote control items you want. I currently have it set with just some dirt blocks in different orders with the different WASD keys as well as sneak and jump. Just by right clicking you lose control of movement except for looking around with the mouse. But you can use the WASD sneak and jump in order to change how things move. In this case pressing W that one is moving over there. Let's talk about precision mechanisms and sequenced assembly. You have a random chance of getting some items by making this. Precision mechanism can only be made through a series of steps. That's what sequenced assembly is. By taking these deployers and making each one of these items into or using each of these items onto a golden plate and then repeating that series five times, it should have a chance of making one of these items, 80%. Then there's a 20% chance of it creating a little bit of some extra weird stuff. Let's start going over how I've got this set up to make a precision mechanism. I've got a filtered funnel, I've got a whole bunch of deployers along the top of a conveyor belt, and I've got a bunch of materials being shooted into the deployers. I have cogs, large cogs, and iron nuggets. So as you can see I have these filtered for each of those specific items and they should attach these to whatever it is that flows along this conveyor belt, which will be a golden plate. Or golden sheet, rather. Let's put one in, see what happens. This is the first cycle. Remember, it takes at least five times for it to go. Now, where's it going to go at the end? Back to the beginning, of course, with one of our new blocks. We'll cover that in a second. But as you can see here, I will demonstrate a little bit more. Watch the arc at the top there, and it flips it like a giant flapjack into that funnel. So let's talk about this block at the end. This is a weighted ejector. When given rotational force and an item is put upon it, it will flip it one block to the left, just like that. But in this case, it's flipping much further. You can actually set where it's going to flip, but it has to be along the same axis. It cannot go diagonally or a block to the side or anything. It will only go in one direction. And there we go. That finishes it off, flips it back, it does not come out because of the filter. One precision mechanism, which can be used to make a multitude of other items. And this removes the integrated circuits and the lapis sheets of before. Cogwheels and large cogwheels can also be assembled sequentially as well, for added benefits. Let's talk about crafting blueprints. These things are really cool. You basically just need to take some kind of recipe, and in this case I'm going to use a cogwheel, a bunch of buttons, andesite alloy, and look, it'll make cogwheels, but these are just ghosts of a recipe. And if you look at it, it shows you what to expect. Now if you have these items in your inventory like I do below, you can automatically craft these just by clicking on them. Let's talk about drowning. That's right, drowning. <laughs> We're going to talk about the copper back tank, the diving helmet, and the diving boots. Now these items here are designed specifically for a few different things, but these three together make underwater exploration a lot easier. Now I am currently in creative, so it doesn't really make a difference here, but without the boots, I can now swim. With them, I sink to the bottom. I'm just demonstrating this for you so that you can better understand. Now this isn't all the boots can do. They also allow you to walk normally on conveyor belts, which boots or no, you no longer need to actually be restricted to the center of a conveyor belt. You can actually walk across it normally now. Just sneak to stop like you normally would if you don't have the boots on. Going back to the back tank and the helmet. As you can see here, it gives me water breathing as long as it has air in it. This air is kind of required to be put in there, but you will need to have your helmet and the back tank on in order to gain the benefit of the water breathing. How to charge it? Well, you put it on a rotational force item and it will start sucking air into the tank. If you increase the rotational speed, it will definitely speed up this process and make it go a lot quicker. There we go. Done. Let's talk about foods. Sweet rolls, honeyed apples, and chocolate glazed berries. Each one gives a different challenge. Sweet rolls, you'll have to figure out how to automate milk and bread. A honeyed apple, well, automating honey and apples. Chocolate glazed berries, picking berries, and of course, how to make chocolate, which involves milk, cocoa beans, and sugar. And with that, you now can have different accesses for harvesting honey, whether it be with a shear, bottle, or with a pump going into a tank. Now in this case, 
I'm using a shear, I'm in survival, and if you watch carefully, it harvests it. The bee is not afraid of me, does not try to sting me or anything. So this is a much safer alternative. It doesn't even involve fire. So continuing on with the back tank, let's talk about the potato cannon. This thing's a lot of fun. It doesn't just shoot potatoes, it will shoot numerous different food types. But if you do decide to use a potato, it's probably one of the simplest ones to do. Let's get ourselves a little pig here so that we can test this out. You shoot it, and well, it's not very accurate. So you're going to want to be careful. As you shoot this thing out, you'll start using up the potatoes in your inventory. Ow. And you can use it to just start taking out your uh, targets. Let's switch it up to a poison potato. It didn't have much health left, but as you can see, it did have green particles. I am currently wasting the few poison potatoes I have. Let's upgrade to a potato recovery cannon. If you look here, I'm able to start shooting a bit more, and sometimes my potatoes will actually be salvageable. I can pick them up. And as you notice here, that pig did have poison particles on it. Don't forget the potato cannon is not just for one hand. You can have it in both or just the offhand and still use a melee weapon. Don't forget a back tank will also stop you from using up the new durability bar on extendo grips and you'll start using the air in it instead. Let's talk about deploying recipes. This here is a curious bell. Well, you can craft it now with just a little bit of brass. But you can also turn it into something a bit more helpful. If you put it on top of a soul fire, it will turn into the haunted bell, which when rung will give visual representations of where mobs can spawn. So if I were to get a little bit of light on the subject so that you can see the difference now that I've done that, ring the bell, you can see that it takes a bit and there, further away, is where mobs can now spawn. Let's talk about card assemblers. These now have a direction and so do your inventions. Well, if you remember this, my little pig deployer here, no, you cannot pocket these with a wrench anymore if it's a mob spawner, but know that you can have a direction for this. So if I push this forward, it will go in one direction. Now watch when I turn it around, it will actually do so by itself. It has a direction. It won't just go backwards anymore. Let's talk about water wheels and crushing wheels. These now can be placed horizontally and still work. It's really impressive and allows for a lot more compact builds in my mind. As you can see here, I have some crushing wheels set up on the side. Let's put some water down and it powers them as before. Why do I have a belt down here? Well, that's because you can actually have belts below them, whether they're horizontal or vertical, and they will crush the items normally. Pretty darn cool, if you ask me, because now you don't have to have it kind of thrown into the world, though you still can, as you see here. You can have it encapsulated on a belt. But they are still dangerous, as you can see here, even if they're horizontal. Let's talk about decorations. This empty blaze burner can now be lit with a flint and steel. By adding a bit of soul sand, you can make a soul fire variant. And if you have a sponge, you can click on a basin with liquids in it and it will remove the liquids in it, just in case you have some kind of little issue or oopsie. That's not all. If you have some undesirable effects upon you and you have some leaking milk nearby, no need to cry over it. Instead, it will now wash your cares away. And don't forget, throne chromatic products are now gravityless. They, they kind of fly about everywhere, so it may also be difficult to catch up with them. You can now dye Nixie tubes as well as belts, just like that, by right-clicking on it with the dye of your choice. And you can just override it with another dye. To eliminate that, get a bucket of water and just right-click on it. Not for the Nixie tubes, though. Yeah, just go back to orange. And one of the most useful things, deployers can now polish items on belts or depots, which is pretty darn cool if you ask me. Just a little bit of a hand crank and bam, you've got yourself polished rose quartz. So if you enjoyed this bit by bit, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe. Don't be afraid to share the mischief, click the notification bell, and don't be afraid to visit us on Twitch. So until next time, folks, I'll see ya.